Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I haven't done this one in probably a year. We're going to go through all of the epics in Raid Shadow Legends and do a quick and dirty. Are they good? Are they not? Use this as your reference for whenever you want. It is going to be the guide to epics. There's so many champs in the game now. I've got to go fast with this one because there's just so many to talk about. You can come to hellhades.com and check out an in-depth review of every single champion in the game if you want to do that including going through all of their areas where they're strong, mastery suggestions, blessing suggestions, gear suggestions, all of that is available for every champion on hellhades.com. But let's go in for it. So Bannerlords, kick us off. Horde in, pretty trash, single target damage dealer with some reset ability, wouldn't build him out. Lordly Legionary, freebie when you get a bit further into the game, kind of okay for finite, but wrong affinity for finite 20, which is really about as far as you would take him through the game. So outside of that, you might use him in Centranos now in Finite stuff, but not that great. Archmage Helmet you get from Doom Tower Normal, one of the first, uh, in fact, the first epic that you pick up. Really worth farming, cool kit. Uh, he's got an AoE stun and he's got some nice buffage for your squad as well. Plus he cannot be turn meter reduced, which is quite cool. Yeah, hard, hard hitter, but isn't really viable in a lot of content. Um, probably not worth building out other than faction war stuff. Arndolf, he's got a bit of a, a ponch. This is an interesting champion. He's got AoE weaken, which is quite unusual. But again, doesn't hit that hard. Wouldn't really build him out. Oathbound is really good for faction wars. He's got great control. AoE decrease attack. Uh, he's got some block active skills, some freezing going on. As I say, great in faction wars where you're trying to lock out certain enemies, which means he's also good in Sintranos as well. Chance of Yasmin, pretty trash. Seneschal, pretty trash. Uh, I know a lot of people will hate on that, but I don't like him at all. Alaric, pretty useless. Lady Quillen, got some turn meter stuff going on, which is quite cool. Um, and she's got some nice, bu a nice buffage going on on her A3. But um, I'd say like a mid-tier champion. If you get her early, worth building out for like an arena type team. So Artimage here, kind of trash as well. Uh, Knight Errant hits really hard on a single target hit. There's not really anywhere in the game that he's relevant. Stag Knight, top tier, one of the best epics in the game. Got AoE decrease attack and defense, plus a decrease speed on his A1. He's also able to buff accuracy if someone miffs a debuff on an enemy, which is quite cool. One of the best here. Fearmonger, trash. Discard, trashy, really. He needs two turn decrease attack on his A1 to really get value. Outside of that, he brings a shield on a, on a three-turn cooldown, which could be quite good for someone like the Scarab boss, but honestly, pretty trash. Eoth Ring, otherwise known as Colin, actually kind of good, even though he looks really bad. Uh, he's got good base stats. He's got a good kit. He's got turn meter fill plus a buff, like a mini Arbiter, which is quite nice for an arena setup. He's got an AoE here as well, where he takes buffs off enemies and a decrease attack on the two-turn cooldown with not bad a chance to land for something like clan boss if you get him early on in the game so yeah pretty decent lady annabelle really good at solo in bommel outside of that it's not a bad champion but not a great champion rowan not bad in an unkillable clan boss team because it's a void champion so therefore affinity friendly everywhere puts out quite a bit of poison that's probably the only use case where i'd say is she's good otherwise wouldn't build azure not bad for faction wars otherwise wouldn't build Warcaster, extremely niche in unkillable clan boss teams, otherwise wouldn't build. Asala, really good epic with a full team revive, really good revive actually, uh, with cool buffs as well when they're revived. And an AoE decrease attack whilst also increasing your team attack. This is a brilliant Ice Golem. Uh, all in all, great arena and great Ice Golem champ. High Elves then, faction two. Royal Guards, still one of the OGs, still a great champion. Brings the enemy max HP nuke. Really good champion, great for Dark Fae, great for end game content, great for late game uh, Finite in stuff like Finite 25, uh, great for Spider up until, well, great for Spider actually, just, just generally great. Also getting a load more use in Sintranos now as well. Tyrell, kind of been power crept a little bit, AoE drop defense, which is good, decrease attack on the A1, which is good. Um, early game clan boss champion, decent for faction wars, Decent for some progression, but um, just better epics out there now with a three-turn cooldown on an AoE decreased defense, which is his main ability. Storamis is 
actually kind of good for Ice Golem with this AoE decrease attack and pretty good for wave content because he's got 100% chance to provoke uh, on a three turn cooldown, which is quite unusual for an epic. So if you're struggling to get through waves in stuff like Doom Tower, he actually comes in pretty good for that. Okay, we've got Indalia, uh, another AoE decrease attack champion that can use for something like early game Ice Golem. Outside of that, not that great. The Nassau kind of needs a buff nowadays. Does bring you a nice heal and increased defense. Awful to fight against in something like Faction Wars or Doom Tower, but not that great to have on your team. Luthia, just a straight damage dealer. Nothing special. Your starter champions can do more. Ilsina, I always forget what this one does. Block buffs. Ah, the block buff champion. Yeah, yeah. And she brings Strengthen. So Strengthen's actually a really good buff. It's a weaker version, but this is straight reducing the damage you take. She can actually be pretty interesting for Hydra. Yeah, not a bad Hydra champ. Ambassador, pretty trashy champ. It's got a taunt mechanic, which can be okay, but I don't really love taunt. So yeah, not that great. Neldor, awesome champion. Really good for finite hard, uh, but also brings AoE, uh, sorry, this one, AoE decrease speed with some healing. Also brings decrease attack and accuracy on a boss. Freezing going on. Quite specific finite hard, but a really good one. Burgess, great solo champion, able to solo a whole bunch of Doom Tower stuff, uh, but he does it incredibly slowly. So if you're, if you're happy with a slow grind, he's your man. Marksman, trash. Jingle Hunter, trash. Battle Sage, kind of niche arena champion. Brings this revive on death ability. I guess that's quite useful for Sand Devil as you are leveling through, if you followed that type of strat. And it's got this uh, increased attack buff for your team, plus a full cleanse. And the buff can't be removed. So it can be used in niche situations like Hydra and Arena. Exemplar, pretty much trash. Um, some Dark Fae, like niche teams, can use her freeze. Outside of that, don't think she's ever used. Andrasia is like a mini net crit in the arena, but she needs a turn to activate her protection. But actually a good protector of a nuka for something like Arena. Eflin here, pretty decent champ. Um, quite high damage and does more damage to supports, tanks, rather than nukas, which is quite an interesting mechanic. But yeah, pretty, pretty high damage champ. Okay, Sacred Order then. Cannon S, pretty trash. Uh, yeah, pretty trashy. Adriel, trash. Hope, we hope she gets better in the future. Frostbringer, when is she going to bring some frost? Um, she is actually useful in Sintranos against Aeneas. Uh, outside of that, pretty trash. Talia, just tons of people do the same thing. She's just a damage dealer. She does hit hard, but she's not that useful. Juliana, good for early to mid game clan boss, on good for early to mid game dragon. Um, actually, does quite a lot of clan boss damage. I use her in my free to play right now. Tanguina's got a nice, a nice block debuffs here uh, and heals, and then she's also got this ability to transfer all debuffs from her to a target and full cleanse of everyone else. So nice for something like, uh, I guess, Never Spider. Anyway, we're taking loads of debuffs, really. Pretty much like a Doom Tower type epic. Aethar, good as a damage dealer against Clan Boss and Dragon, as a poisoner, and uh, good in like unkillable teams for that type of thing. Relic Keeper, pretty trash, honestly. Does some damage very early game in Arena. Wouldn't build him out. Missionary, trash. Romero, trash. Lady Atessa, pretty much trash. Mordecai, good support champion for Arathalos. Gives you increased attack and your burns. Uh, also really good in Spider all the way through to like stage 25. Better when you start to get in a higher level of Spider. Pretty useful in Ice Golem Hard uh, when you are when you need those burns. Anywhere where you need burns, he's not bad as like one of the most consistent epics. Also quite good in Hydra because his burn ability places the burns, not physically hits, which means you can put them on over the top of Poison Cloud and then he won't be weak hitting everywhere. So actually got a lot of utility, this guy. Bushy, pretty trash, does have some ability because of his passive where he's unkillable, pops back up. Uh, if you want to use that in like an unkillable team on clan boss in certain setups, or if you want some sort of funky early level sand devil champion to just kind of go up to about level seven or so, he could solo it uh, in the right build. Phoenix hits really hard, really hard hitting A1 champion, one of the hardest in the game. It's also got block revive on it, really good to for killing like the side ads on Ice Golem and making sure they don't come back. And in the arena, he can actually be a menace as well, just taking people down. So pretty useful. Deacon, one of the best epics in the game. AoE drop defense. AoE turn me to control. 
improve in, uh, increase in your turn meter as well. A leech, great for clan boss, great honestly anywhere in the game. Mistress, only good for faction wars. Lodric, um, he's got decreased attack A1 plus some shielding and uh, a weak source ally protect. He's okay. He's like a good early game clan boss champion, but probably not worth your investment. Anchorite, good champion, does buff extension, does some healing. Good in uh, a lot of clan boss teams. Also, just generally good support. Uh, Candlestick head. So she, <laughs> she's actually better than she looks because she looks terrible. Uh, but she does have a strength and ability plus a like mini cleanse going on. The strength and cannot be taken away, which is quite cool. Makes her useful in Hydra, especially when she does burns as well, um, and an AOE decreased attack, which cannot be resisted if they're under burns. So. Yeah, actually really good. Like way better than people give her credit for. Cardinal is a good uh, arena champion in the right setup if you're controlling the fight. So she's got one of the best revives in the game. Uh, she revives all dead allies, heals them, and takes their turn meter to max. Really good with Titus, who does insane damage when he's low health. The fact that she brings her turn meter to max means that your team will all have a go. Like 100%. So her in stone skin. Can be lethal uh really really useful champion for that light swan probably a bit power prep nowadays but does have a decreased attack decreased speed um and has got a revive on death mechanic which could be good in someone like sand devil shamal is like a hydra specialist his passive has been fixed or, or rewritten i should say not fixed rewritten because they couldn't fix it they just made it do what it was actually doing in, instead so basically Anytime anyone on your team is fear or true feared in Hydra, he wipes that off and he gives your leader a bunch of turn meter, which means you just cycle through your leader steals really quick. Pretty nuts. Uh, Godseeker is a top tier epic and yeah, one of the best in the game. Awesome for Sand Devil um, and then good pretty much anywhere else. For Sand Devil, she's got quite a unique mechanic where she's able to, uh, yeah, she's able to revive someone just before they're about to die. The first person who dies and then she's also got a revive and the revive resets the cooldown of all skills this is nuts uh, so it basically means that she if you put her as the leader she revives herself when everyone dies and then she revive whoever else is with her that's how you get these two man uh god seeker teams for sand devil okay barbarians aina aina no good she's got uh decreased defense and weaken uh, so she's kind of good. She's actually a hard hitter for clan boss, but she's a bit wonky for unkillable teams because of this random chance to get an extra turn. Jotun, no thanks. Takara, she loves a book. She reads all day long. Uh, she does hit kind of hard, but probably not worth the book investment. Ator useless. Amina, used to like her. Now I don't like her so much. She's got AoE drop defense, which is her best thing on a three turn. But honestly, I think she's kind of a poor investment. I do. I'd rather book War Maiden from this same faction if I needed some faction wars. And there's loads of other better epics now, in my opinion, for that job. Alika of the sisters, she's the best one. She hits really hard. She's not bad as your DPS for a clan boss team. Ishada, good for faction wars. Outside of that, wouldn't use her. Kalia, useless. Maeve, uh, probably the worst of the sisters. Baroth is okay he's okay he's got some shieldage going on he's got a bit of turn meter control going on so he's okay against something like finite but again it wouldn't take him past like level 50. the master is the freebie that you get for doing for having friends and bringing friends into the game she's only good if you bring her big brother in chronum chronum's really good her on her own not so good Void painted, great healer with her A2. Um, that's about all she's got still. And she looks very sour. High Katoon, really good champion. She's a freebie. You get her on day 30. She's really good. Increased speed. She puts decreased speed on enemies. Uh, and she does a turn meter drop on enemies as well. Actually, very underrated. Really useful right through the mid game. Bala, just not worth building outside of a War Maiden. Again, a weak source decreased defense from her. Barakin. Great epic, one of the best epics in the game. It's got ally attack, bringing your whole team in the mix whilst giving them great buffs. He's also got a burn and some poison and a drop defense. Really good epic. Oscar Rule, 
is not bad for like control. So he's got an AoE stun, uh, pretty good for like Doom Tower waves. Harkon's only use case really is spreading a bunch of burns and high single target damage. There's not many calls in the game for either of those things, which means you get sidelined for most of the game. So way a bit similar to Aina, no good. She hits really hard. She doesn't have the wonky kind of like extra turn mechanic, which means she can fit into clan boss teams as your damage, especially in unkillable teams. Sky touched, decent um, cleanser. So she's got this full cleanse plus block debuffs, really good. She does kill herself. Um, you know, she's, she's a bit disturbed. But outside of that, she's kind of awesome, actually. She's a good healer. She's a good cleanser. In the right setup, she's really useful. Uh, okay, Ogryn Tribes. So, Grimskin needs a wash. That's about all I've got to say about him. Udo, top tier epic. Really good. Decreased defense and block buffs. Brilliant for Hydra. Good generally in most content. Got a nice heal and revive here as well. Uh, got a leech. And then it's got this cool mechanic that if she is the last person alive, she gets to use her revive, uh, which is cool. Claude, underrated. Actually got a nice increased speed buff, increased accuracy buff, uh, as well as some shielding. He works really well on a two for one speed tune for clan boss if you get someone who extends his increased speed buff. Uh, I've, I've done videos on this. Really underrated epic. Siege Hulk is a decreased defense champion who smacks. Three turn cooldown on this, really hard hitting. He does have a very low base defense, which makes him a bit squishy himself. Lawn Cutter, get back to the gardens. No place for you in this game. Skull Crusher, actually really uh, good still. He's, he's a good mid to late game clan boss champion. He's got ally protection, which is one of the, the best skills if you do not have an unkillable team. Uh, he, he basically allows your team to hit more often with counterattack, and he protects them from dying. So really, really useful. Shatterbones has actually got some good turn meter control, good for waves, but honestly, I probably wouldn't build him on most accounts. Like there's normally a better option. Grunch, it's got a nice cleanse. You might use him in something like Never Spider, but again, better options out there wouldn't tend to build him. Seas, no thanks, pretty trash. Ruckus, decent, epic. Again, overlooked a lot of the time, but for no real decent reason. Triple A1 is good for finite. He's got a decreased speed ability as well, as well as a turn meter drop. Um, and then he's got heal reduction. But he's, a, he's almost like man-made for finite, honestly. Speed in dungeons, really good finite champ. Yalka, pretty niche -y. Hits very hard. Definitely worth building out for your faction war team um, and for like Sintranos type teams. But he's a lot of fun. He does a lot of damage uh, and people overlook him. But he, I guess there's a lot of damage dealers in the game. So maybe you've just got better. Uh, Cage Breaker needs a buff. Cold Brawler, still one of the best poisoners in the game. If you just want someone who's going to kick out a ton of poison against Clan Boss, he's, he's your man. Doesn't even need books. Really good for that. Rush, one of the freebie champions you get, I think maybe day 90 or 180 or something. Pretty good. Hits hard. He's a defense-based champion, so he can be built quite tanky. He's got two AoE hits, doing decreased attack, doing some heals for your team as well. And he's got Leech. Yeah, good champion, especially for something like Clan Boss or for like wave-based content just to keep your team alive. Wuzgar, one of the newer epics in the game. Quad hit A1. It's very rare to have this. Again, he's kind of like an inbuilt Fire Knight beast. That's his mode. Yeah, everything about him is, says Fire Knight. He's got reflect damage. If your team are hit with reflect damage on, then um, you, you basically reflect layers of the Fire Knight shield away. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, good chap. Manator, still a legend. Uh, creates unkillable clan boss teams. He's really good in faction wars. He's really good in spider. He's got an AOE decrease attack. Steals turn meter. Makes your team not able to die. Really, really, really good champ. Taran Titan is trash. Trank is really, really good as a void epic. AOE burns, which is great. He hits hard. He's got, um, yeah, he's got nice mechanics. He's got Weaken as well. Really good champ. Prunda loves a slab of cake and a pie and um, anything else he can get his hands on. Loves it. He's kind of just a unit, right? He just stands there in front of the waves, provokes them up, and then says, try and kill me. Probably can't. And if you, you try to, I'm going to eat you. He's also got Strengthen on his team and heals. 
This guy's decent. He's a really nice tank, actually. Really good tank. Eurodrim, um, probably one of the most contentious nerfs that ever happened on Eurodrim, but still a good champion. Still able to put out AoE poisons and heals on your team. He's like a mini bad Eltazar. And yeah, good champ. Uh, right, Lizards. Jarang, useless. Jareg, pretty decent. Jareg's got ally protection, good clan boss champion. Also good in places like Griffin uh, in Doom Tower and against the Eternal Dragon in Doom Tower because he doesn't have many abilities that can be down and he's got a decreased attack on his A1, which is quite reliable. Not bad in, uh, against Amius as well, actually. Venomage, top tier epic. Really, really good. L literally good in tons of areas. If you've got Venomage, go and, go and check the actual guide I've got on my channel on Venomage because honestly, because solo stuff, Ice Golem, Dragon, uh, awesome in, in uh, Sintranos. Great in Clan Boss. Like, just so many places this champion is really good. Basilisk has got this kind of same type of revive thing going on. Can be useful to solo something like early game Sand Devil. Um, and hits quite hard on his A1 with an AoE. Outside of that, pretty niche. Aox, really good. Uh, again, AoE heal, which is nice. Um, it's got an AoE decrease attack. Got a little bit of poison going on, albeit the chance is low. But this is the best thing about Aox. When Aox is hit, he increases the, the duration of debuffs on the person who hits him. Makes him really good for Iron Twins, pairing with someone like a Geomancer. The burn goes up. When Aox is hit, he can see like spikes to burn up to higher stacks. Good in Clan Boss as well with all of these different mechanics. Good in Ice Golem as well. Very overlooked champion, I think. Very good one, actually. Broodlord, very average. Wouldn't build it out. Z, I don't even have a Z yet. This is someone you get from doing Doom Tower hard. Uh, sorry, Doom Tower normal. But you have to do it for, uh, for months and months and years before you get this champion. Um, and by then, everyone is so bored. Drake. <laughs> Useless. Shizo, good early game. Uh, Hydra champion to do the provoke. That's it. That's all, that's all he's good for. But you could take him up to level 50. He will do a two-turn provoke against the, um, the head of decay and at least let you get your first key. That's what he's good for. Quadron, got some buffs going on, but pretty average epic. The larger, I can't remember this one, what's going on? AoE decrease attack, so Ice Golem type of champ and some shieldage to himself. Yeah, probably wouldn't use him outside of Ice Golem, honestly. Broadmoor has got some nice revive abilities and increased turn meter and speed. Good champion, actually. Good reviver. Really good for this faction, for faction wars, but generally decent to keep your team alive and keep the team moving. Skathic's got a full team cleanse, so cleanse all the debuffs off, which is really good. The A3 ability is actually massive because he then puts block debuffs on and a shield. This A3 is one of the best support abilities in the game for an epic. Brilliant. The rest of his kit's okay. There's nothing else. I guess he's got a deep speed as well, but the rest of his kit's okay. That ability is like god tier. Right, Skinwalkers. If you're still with me, well done. If you like my content, hit the sub. Um, we carry on. Taurus, AoE Poisoner. Really good when paired with a Poison Exploder champion like Xavier or Elenaril. Also kind of good. I did a video recently where uh, I put the, uh, the new Blessing change, Lethal Dose on him. And it does a lot of damage. You should watch that video if you've got Taurus and want to do something fun. Flesh Terror, pretty trash. Scabby, um, Scabby's pretty good in Clan Boss, Poisoner. Uh, it's kind of like his only spot, honestly. Ripper, rip yourself up, absolute trash. Brain Beast, trash. The Thug, trash. Yaga, trash. Ursine Ice Crusher, trash. This is a trash faction, I'll tell you that. Ursine Ironhide does have some turn meter stuff going on. And an AoE decrease attack. Pretty good for uh, Ice Golem, but again, probably wouldn't take him to like level 60, really. Torres, worth taking to 50. Good reviver for this faction for Faction Wars. Steel Skull, good support. Definitely worth a 50 as well. Gives you AoE or your team increased defense and a heal. Definitely usable in somewhere like Sintranos or in some of the Doom Tower secret rooms. Okay, we've got Fane. Fane's a really good all round champ. Hard hitter. Great clan boss champion with all of the debuffs you could possibly want. Quite hard to keep alive. You're definitely going to need to bring an ally protector in to keep her going. And maybe some shieldage as well. Outside of that, quite good for finite. Quite good for faction wars as well. Bovos, can't remember what he does. He's a newbie. 
decreased speed, AoE decreased crit rate. This is quite a rare ability to have. If you decrease crit rate in PvE content, then you will never be crit, okay? So PvE is basically like you versus computer. PvP, obviously people can build up to 100% crit rate, but PvE, you'll never be crit, which is quite cool. Also some buffage for you. I think he's okay, but not anything too crazy. Basher's quite good in the arena and in faction wars. He's got an ability that locks out the enemy waves. So they're only going to come at you with A1s. Um, really good in faction wars, actually. Very probably like MVP wave-based epic for faction wars. A Kemptum is awesome, does tons of damage. Throws poisons out everywhere, throws hex out everywhere. Like he is a wave destroyer. He does loads of damage and he's got quite unique mechanics in his passive that when someone ticks a poison tick, it's as if you're hitting them with that poison tick. So if he's wearing lifesteal gear, he will heal through that. It's actually really useful. Wordren, hard hitter, but kind of weird. Frenzy, fairly good champ actually. So um, all about HP burn. So we've got triple burns going out. It's at random, which is not ideal, but still pretty good for Hydra. And AoE provoke here as well. Pretty good for Hydra. Nothing too crazy, but not bad. Uh, Steamwalkers. Right, let's go for the Orcs. Ultimate Gaelic is the original HP burner for Epics. He's now massively outscaled by someone like a Mordecai. But again, if you don't have a burner yet, he's actually going to be a really good entry level kind of like ticket to move you through a spider. Duke, really good Epic. AoE decreased defense and attack. A bit similar to Stagnite, really. He's got a Provoke as well, which makes him useful in Magma Dragon and makes him useful in Hydra. Uh, but generally, like, Universally useful across the game. Jorks, your reviver for this faction, pretty decent. Tagor, I guess he's your support champion, so he's got your speed buff and heal on the A2. He's also got another revive. So Tagor and Jorg, both really good for faction wars and for keeping your team alive. Uruka, basically a damage dealer with a, a revive on death buff. So this is another champion that's, I, th I think really she was brought in to try and help you deal with Sand Devil or Iron Twins, but she's mid-tier at both, so probably wouldn't build her out. Torture Helm, Mr. Smiles. Uh, he's always smiling, this guy. Again, one of these people that revives themselves, really good in that kind of like stun targeting slot in clan boss, in the right type of team. Very good at doing something like a solo Dragon 20 with the right type of build. I've done uh, videos on these things, but he's not the quickest at doing it. What's interesting about this guy is that when he's got a load of dead allies, he does more damage. So basically, he can just one pop someone if he's got everyone dead in the right sort of build, but quite niche. Don't go and build him because I said he's quite cool. He's different. He's a niche, cool type of guy. It needs a really specific type of build. So Gala, AoE drop defense, hard hitter, good arena champion, mid tier at this ability nowadays. Used to be top tier. Now she's mid tier. We've had a bunch of new epics in the game since, since she was like ruling the roost. Blood Feather only really used as a turn meter drop in something like Faction Wars against a boss. Probably wouldn't take a past level 50. Bonekeeper Trash, Shaman Trash, Terror Beast Trash, Brask. Um, not a bad healer, okay healer. Best thing about him is you don't need a lot going on. Doesn't need to be booked. Put him in Retribution Gear, or Retaliation, I think it's called. Retaliation Gear. Every time he A1s, he gets turn meter fill and he heals your team. Needs to be 100% crit rate, and that's about it. High health. Salash Survivor, uh, buff extender, and good clan boss champion. Also good in the arena. Got this passive ability that if someone was about to die, he throws out a ally protect and puts block damage on herself. So she basically protects them from their death uh, or in, in a lot of situations. Yellow Gurner here is uh, another one of these kind of like uh, AoE decrease attack champions can be used in Ice Golem. Outside of that, it's probably not much going on really. Trombor, uh, actually good clan boss champions, got ally protect. Also got uh, Weaken and Leech on the A1 here. Yeah, really good champ actually. This is an underrated champion. Also got a random rebuff, uh, sorry, debuff removal, which could be used if timed properly to cleanse a stun and stuff like that. So. Yeah, really underrated champion, I'd say. Seer is the queen of the nukes. You put loads of buffs on your team. You rip them off with Seer. She kills everybody out there. Really good champ. Two hack, 
mid tier, I would say, got some turn meter control stuff going on. Uh, not bad in finite, but generally average. Tolf is useless, absolutely useless. The Burger, another one of these champions that you get from doing like months and months of Doom Tower normal. Pretty good one though. So poisons, lots of damage, really hard hitter. Pretty good one if you do get her, but uh, I am not about that. <laughs> Demon Spawn. Allure, one of the best turn meter control champions in the game if she's fighting one enemy. Really good for Dark Fey once you've cleared out your enemy team. Uh, really good for Fire Knight up until uh, you go into hard where you can't use her anymore. Excruciator. She's just like a, I can one shot anyone in the arena and then I stand there. What are you doing next? Akov, AoE HP Burner, another Doom Tower epic, but a really good one. One of the earlier ones to get as well. Probably surpasses all of the other ones I've spoken about so far once you've picked him up. So really worth putting some time in to get him. Great for Spider. Good for, uh, you know, I stole him hard, I guess. <clears throat> Buildrax, one of the few epics that can hex and, and kind of act as a support, but really the kit's not good enough. Kind of trashy. Cyan is trash. Uh, Jane is trash. Soul Drinker, only useful in some like funky arena bomb teams. Generally trash. Nazana, not a bad support, but probably not worth your time to invest in. I think there's lots better. Infernal Baroness, extremely similar to Nazana, average at best. Both of these are okay in faction wars, but not really any, anything better than that. Tanix, trash. Achak, great epic. Does an AoE ability that will freeze the enemy. Generally, it's freeze. If they've got high uh, defense, then it'll be a burn. But for most PvE, even defense-based enemies have got high attack. So generally, it's a freeze. And then I've got this passive here. So heals allies whenever a burn goes off and fills turn meter whenever a freeze goes off. So against someone like Spider, you've got loads of Spiderlings. You burn them all, you freeze them all, and you're just getting tons of turn meter and tons of burn ticks going off. No one dies. Everyone gets tons of turns. Pretty fun. Hellgazer, pretty trash. Tarshan, actually kind of decent. Provoke A1 with an okay level to do it. So not bad for something like Magma Dragon. Okay for Hydra. Not, not really high enough chance, but not terrible. AoE Weaken is quite unusual. And then a nice turn meter fill with buff. If you're looking to bring someone in who's going to buff a defense nuker before they then do their nuke, you get your turn meter fill, you get your increased defense. And away you go. Uh, Gorlos, pretty good. Defense down champ. So again, three turn cooldown on this with some other buffs, including a burn. Actually really good alongside that Sand Devil. Uh, sorry, alongside the um, God Seeker champion. If you're doing like a Sand Devil duo. Did a showcase of this. It was really quick. Magnard, decent HP Nuka uh, for Arena. Jura is your reviver for this faction. Only with builder for faction was at like level 50. Urticata, okay poisoner for clan boss if you get early, but outscaled by lots of others. Paidma has got a decent decrease attack on the A1, which is good for clan boss. Uh, outside of that, not much going on. Umbral can cycle um, block buffs on Hydra endlessly. She's got it on a three turn cooldown. It goes on for three turns, which is nice. Also hits quite hard and can become unkillable. She's kind of like... MVP for Faction Wars against something like a Hydra Wave. Block their ability to put counterattack up and shields with her A2. And then you provoke the whole enemy team and she becomes unkillable. So she's really good for that. Skimfost, great epic. Really good at turn meter control. Uh, he's got this great A3 where he steals the turn meter. So it's almost like he's getting an extra turn. And he's got decreased speed on his A1. Good for Fire Knight, great for Spider, great for a load of Doom Tower bosses as well. Woo! What are we on? Undead Hordes. Give me a second. Still going, right. Uh, Undead Hordes, let's do it. Door Grab, like a mini Arbiter. Not bad if you get them early. Good for the arena and good as like an early game carry. Vibes your team, gives you increased attack, all of those type of things. Seeker, brilliant champion. Great for Clan Boss, great for like two for one speed tunes. One of the best champions in the game for that. And he hits hard, by the way. Uh, he has got a turn meter fill and he gives your team increased attack, which basically pumps out more damage. Catacomb nowadays needs a buff. Dark Aethel needs a buff. Dark Elhane, hard nuka. Um, good counter to someone like a Tormund. 
Also pretty good for Dark Fae. Uh, yeah, decent champ. Husk has got the enemy max HP nuke, which is unusual for an epic, especially on an AoE. Um, he's also, also got an AoE stun at the same time as well. Also a provoke on the A1, which books up to a 40% chance, which is quite nice for Hydra. So yeah, Husk is really useful. Ram, Poison Exploder, but it's single target, kind of useless, doesn't really have a place in the game. Lich, average. Hexia can one-shot someone in the arena really easy, but just stands there waiting for what's going to happen next. Fault's in a trash. Corpse Collector, kind of underrated, I would say. Got Leech, has got um, Poisons as well. Pretty decent early to mid-game clan boss. Bossy and Mage, good epic. Really good support champion. Brings loads of buffs uh, on the A2. Brings a cleanse as well on the A3. Really good. So we then got Zelatar, pretty trash really. Sleep dude. Bogoth, awesome tank. Uh, can tank up loads of damage and heal your team whilst he's doing it. One of the best tanks in the game for that type of mode. Really good against Bommel as well for like cheese teams. And uh, yeah, just generally useful. Good in the arena as well. Balthus is pretty trash. Anax, hard hitter. Really good in clan boss in unkillable teams, especially block damage ones, uh, but brings a lot of utility in terms of debuffs. Uh, poisons, decreased defense, weaken. Everything you need to do more damage against a clan boss. Ostrox, one of the new guys. Pretty trashy, I think. There's not much going on. AoE block buffs is quite nice in Hydra. I think he's meant for Hydra, but uh, yeah, not really too much going on. Kafru is the new one, part of the fusion that's happening right now uh, as I'm recording this. And I think he's okay. I don't think he's brilliant. I think there's some stuff that you could do with him in terms of clan boss. So you could do this kind of like unkillable ability with Taunt. He'll then become part of some of the unkillable teams, like a, a, a war tower team, re replacing Warcaster with this guy. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite niche. Okay, Dark Elves. Captain Tamelia, I think is kind of trash. Caden is a good reviver. Again, a faction war champion. It's hard as well as defense-based champ, so pretty good. Also good for Ice Golems. He's got AoE decrease attack. Dark Kale, really good. One of the um, epics that you get from normal Doom Tower. Does a ton of damage. Puts out poisons. Puts out decrease attack on an AoE. Really good for Ice Golem up until you get to hard. And then even after that, because he's able to... Uh, when does he do it? On his A1? Yeah, instantly activates poisons and burns can be really good at just like instantly nuking down an enemy threat. So, especially bosses. Win if one of the ones from Doom Tower Normal as well. Uh, hard hitter, but super long. Get this one. Spider basically does its namesake really well. Puts out decreased defense and weaken for someone then to come in and nuke. Also has got a decreased uh, attack as well on a different ability. Both of them though are kind of like old school uh, in terms of their quality versus some of the new stuff that's come out. But still, he's decent. He's a decent dungeon runner. Uh, Dirindil, who's this guy? Useless. No, probably hits probably hits really hard on this A3, actually, but single target, one-off hit, whatever. Rian is really good. So able to remove all buffs off of enemies and then replace it with Weaken. Plus got a revive in there as well. This pretty trash. Uh, Krakow, pretty trash. Luria, decent for someone like Bommel, if you need a freeze. So it's got an AoE freeze, which is unusual for an epic. Not 100%, no, it's, it's only a 50. Could do a bit more damage, honestly, to make that ability more worthwhile. Does have some other debuffs as well, but it's all like RNG layered upon RNG, so I don't really favor her that much. Crimson Helm can be used to solo Bommel. Uh, that's about all I would use her for. Warden, Mr. Emo is trash. Uh, Delva, pretty trash. Did get a buff, I think, which made her hit harder. Does have AoE drop defense now, but it's not 100% chance. Four turn cooldown. Just too many reasons why it's not good enough. Fang Cleric is trash. Visionary, good for faction wars. Uh, good support based champ. So she's got a nice turn meter fill with buffs. Um, and another one of these kind of like decreased crit rate champions, which is really good for PvE. Again, probably wouldn't take her past level 50. Lua, quite hard hitter. Does a bunch of AoE damage. Quite good for finite as well. Sila, really good turn meter control champ. If you're struggling with like Doom Tower waves, she'll push their turn meter back again and again, put decreased speed on them as well. If you put her in a stun set, even better. 
because she's got a load of AOE stuff going on. And yeah, just generally good epic for wave-based control. But damn, still good in the arena, even for like today's um, arena meta. You won't see her in plat anymore because of Polymorph, but if you've got her and you're a normal player, she rips all of the buffs off the enemies. She replaces it with drop defense and weaken, and then you just go in and slam dunk someone to death. So still good for that. But Polymorph wrecked her quite hard. Uh, okay, Night Revs. Crypt Witch, Trash Witch. Pitiless one, a pity the fool that gets Pitiless one. Necro Hunter, I mean, he got a buff. He hits quite hard now, but who wants to use this guy? No one. This great monster, good epic. Still really good for Spider, good for early game progression, good for Nightmare Campaign progression. Um, AoE stun with some shieldage for your team. Barsalus, need I say more? Useless. Aishma, kind of okay. Got a decrease, uh, so got a weaken on an AoE, but nothing much going on. Sinatia, good champion when paired with Skull Crown. Pretty good anyway. AoE hits, quite hard hitter. Good healing mechanics as well. Doom Priest is great. Often if I'm struggling with content, I just throw a Doom Priest in there and it helps me out. We'll just strip off layers of debuffs every time she gets a turn. So really good in a lot of late game content. Topolka, good for early to mid game clan boss teams as you're moving into that kind of like nightmare or ultra nightmare setup for like teams really until you start to get unkillable teams going or two for one speed tunes going. Rector Draft, good support healer. Um, very hard to, to kill your team when she gets going. She's got massive heals. She's got good revive as well. And she's got a decrease attack that can land on a weak hit. Uh, don't tell the coders, it's bugged. Tylesia, one of the few decreased defense champions that doesn't need books to have a 100% chance to land decreased defense, which is really useful. Books, though, to a three turn cooldown, so it's better when booked. And also, it's got the ability to get hexes out there as well. Good for Hydra and good for sort of general wave based content. Lady Iresh, pretty trashy. Deathless, trashy. Kytis, pretty trash, honestly. He's very cool in a card, um, Cardiel team where she revives you with low health and then he nukes someone into the ground. Outside of that, you wouldn't really build him. Burgdorf Trash. Pestilos is pretty good. So he's got burns. Also got some nice buffage and a leech. But I don't know. Like, if I pick up a Pestilus, probably I've already got different champions that I'd rather build, honestly. Branox is okay. Pretty trashy. I probably wouldn't build her out. Malkith is a reviver for this faction. So again, if you're struggling for... Faction Wars, good for that. Faceless, can one-shot anybody, but he never shows his face. And um, <laughs> and I, I don't know, he one-shot anyone. He ignores defense, which is very cool. Very, It will kill anybody on the, on the map, but then got no inbuilt survivability to go again. Skull Crown, generally good nuka. AoE nuka with AoE weaken, pretty good. Um, great for arena. Golden Reaper is a speed freak. So it gets your team moving fast. Also, it's got AoE decrease attack, which makes her good for Ice Golem. If she had a speed aura, she would be in that top group of speed champions. But because she doesn't, uh, I think she gets overlooked a lot. Whisper, hard single target damage dealer. Saf loves Whisper, and she can do a lot of damage because she ignores a lot of defense. Uh, right, three factions to go. Dwarfs. Grizzled Yarl, pretty good for faction wars. He's got AoE decrease attack, not bad for Ice Golem. He's good at basically coming in with that clutch, increased defense, and block debuff moment on a three turn cooldown. Could really do with a two turn block debuffs to make him properly viable in a lot of content. Cornelia can solo every single Doom Tower boss. Go and check out YST if you don't believe me. Bilya, pretty good for Spider as a nuka and a turn me to control champ. Rearguard Sergeant, great in faction wars. Um, she's got that ability to uh, bring ally protect. Also good for clan boss for like mid, mid game teams, really up until nightmare clan boss, I'd say for decreased attack backup and a decreased defense. A one geo, one of the best epics in the game. He's all about late game content. You put his burn on with the A3 on anything. When, when that enemy hits anyone on your team, then they just take a ton of damage. That's what he's all about. He's in the best teams in the game for a ton of content. A ton of content. I'll do a separate video on that soon, but uh, Iron Twins is up there. Um, Never Spider is up there. 
Clan Boss is up there, like Hydra teams. Like it's, it's all over the place. Very, very good. Ishbale is really a niche, very good at, at bomb all killing with her bombs. That's probably her best place, but can't do it on her own. Um, Rock Breaker used to be very cool. Now he's very niche. He does have a new home in Sintranos in certain levels where he's bringing that kind of like control and provoking and making himself extremely tanky with his passive there. Uh, Melgut, good reviver for this faction and general support. Fodbor is your decreased defense champion in this faction, but on a four turn cooldown, so it makes him less desirable than others, but good for faction wars. Morag, really, really great champion. Great for some of the new Sintranos content. Also good in the clan boss team, brings your team a strength and ability, hits really hard, defense base so hard to kill, and brings an ally attack as well. Broodkeeper gives you a turn meter boost and increase attack, a bit like an Arbiter, so good support in that faction. Birdal, pretty trash. Gala, used for some like arena killing. She can kill a lot of stuff, a bit like Whisper, honestly, like single target nuke, and then maybe get a second person out, out the out the fight, but I don't personally love her. I know that she is used though at a high level, so she can be used uh, in a decent way. Rugna um, is okay, can be used in clan boss for like your drop defense and weaken champion. He does like to kill himself though, so you need to make sure you're not using the ability that kills him. <laughs> um, Dimitha, god tier, epic, enables unkillable teams by herself, and um, yeah used in a lot of content, but mainly a clan boss champion. Shadowkin then. Taragi, great clan boss epic, brings you ally protect, brings you heals, brings you poison. He's a man-made unit to fight clan boss. Tatsu is a great champion as well, also good in clan boss actually with leech, uh, as well as decreased attack and increased defense. But this same set of abilities is good for Ice Golem and a bunch of like support-based content that you need. Chani's kind of trash. Maguru's kind of trash. Umi is kind of trash as well. Tomo is actually not a bad support, so she's bringing you AoE decrease attack, but 100% chance to land if booked. She's also bringing a turn meter feel uh, and, a, and a nice buff. So she's generally, so she's good in Shadowkin. She's, she's built to be a Shadowkin faction war champ, I would say. Outside of that, she doesn't get a lot of use. Sashi, though, um, gives you turn meter feel and increase attack. So again, mini arbiter in terms of what she's going to do. Um, and she's bringing the leech. Pretty good champion, actually, Sashi. Benchy, great um, finite champion and good early game uh, clan boss champ. Buren Geary can solo bomb all. That's probably his best spot. Also has got an AoE stun. But um, Kinoishi is pretty cool in clan boss, but quite hard to speed tune. He's actually got a ally protect with a turn meter feel. That's the hard part about the speed tuning, honestly. Uh, I, I have done videos using her. I have got guides which use her in Clan Boss, but she's quite difficult. Bushi is a hard hitting epic, really hard hitting if you set her up right. So she attacks all enemies instead of one when you counter attack with the A1. Okay. And she puts counter attack on herself. So she can be the head of mischief tank, which, which means you're going to need some decent resistance on her. But then when she counter attacks, she smacks with this A1 in the right setting but she's extremely squishy with only 10k health so you need some good support to keep her alive uh Surin here i don't hear talked about a lot but actually does bring an aoe drop defense which is good for the faction uh it's not 100 percent. i guess that's why she's not used that much and she brings weaken and poison as well which would be pretty good for clan boss honestly chinuru is uh, a bit of a bait can hit hard can clear a whole wave but uh, not that great gory not bad for Finite hard. That's the only spot really in the game where he's any good at all. Shurujin is a bit of a bait as well for your resources. I would say don't build him. King Agashi, kind of okay for clan boss. Not great outside of that. Mazamoto, not bad. Quite a, a decent finite champion. Uh, not finite, sorry. Ice Golem with the AoE drop attack. Also is another one of these ones that can buff your defense-based Nuka, giving you an increased defense buff and a turn meter fill. Aboru, uh, good for Hydra. Gembo, good as an arena nuka, um, able to rip off buffs before he does some damage. Tyre is another one of these um, Doom Tower normal epics. Actually, a good epic. Got some really hard hitting abilities and some good poison mechanics as well. Also, I guess like triple hit here 
plus uh, heal reduction makes her pretty useful for something like uh, finite. Last one then, Sylvan Watchers. Well done. If you've watched the whole video, you get yourself 10 house points. Well done. All uh, right, Cormac, kind of trash. Helen, quite a hard hitter. Brings decreased speed. Brings uh, an AoE smack. Not bad for this faction, for faction was as a nuker because there's not many epics that do a lot of damage. Lock Wayne, AoE, uh, AoE ability on the A2. North Shield on the A3, but generally kind of trash. Creodan is a brilliant epic. Uh, it's got AoE freeze. Really good for finite hard and good for crowd control. Also gives you a speed boost. Uh, buff as well, sorry. Duodan, not bad for certain um, Phantom Grove teams. If you're looking to use that taunt ability to direct where that Enfeeble is going to go, also can use the same taunt ability to direct the stun for Clan Boss and to direct um, the head of Decay in Hydra. So it's a few use cases for him. Dithy, fell in love with this epic on my free to play for this year. AoE decreased defense. Loads of cycling of turns which makes him really fun and and can do a lot of damage as well pan i never remember what this guy does double freeze buffage triple hit i guess he's made to be a finite hard champion 50 percent chance to freeze on his a1 but nowhere near as good as someone like a creodan or a gory probably doesn't get used a ton orn has got the ability to still solo some stuff like dragon and ice golem at lower levels did get a little bit of a nerf, which was unfortunate, but still got a lot of poisons that you can kick out against enemy waves. Ruella, really good epic. Great for Finite. Great in Sintranos for some content as well. Pretty good in Clan Boss as well. Ender, kind of trash. Um, Wyronen is your reviver for this faction, but only a single um, teammate and a speed booster. So kind of like a faction war champion just to try and keep your team alive. Nia is a kind of niche champion got the ability to be like really cool really cool yeah he's got this a2 cleanses someone heals them and then resets their cooldown on the skills by two turns you can get very cool hydra teams going with this very cool uh clan boss teams going with this she'll always do it on the leader unless someone else looks more dead okay so this is the challenge if someone else is taking big hits she'll She'll stop what you're trying to make happen with this reset and do something else. But if you can make it happen, she's got a really good kit as well. Ally Protect, great for Clan Boss. Strengthen is great for Clan Boss as well. And then Aila, Life Braid here, is uh, kind of trash. So there you go. All epics reviewed. I don't know how long that took. If you're still here, well done. Please sub to the channel if you like my content. And I'll catch you in the next one.